I am often asked why my presentations, books or videos on electrically activated alkaline water take such a long time. I must confess they should actually be a lot longer. Yet I understand that at first only core information is wanted. Okay, I will try this. In former times only poor people were drinking water. But in the late 18th century, drinking healing waters become a kind of fashion. Around 200 years ago, the pharmacist Friedrich Adolf August Strube from Dresden had the idea that some famous mineral waters that were known to be evidently healthy could be created artificially. He mixed minerals in purified water and had a huge success with his drinking cure institutions from London to Moscow. In the 1920s, the electrochemist Boto von Schwerin, a Berliner, had the idea of using electrolysis to produce artificial mineral waters. Previously, water electrolysis was only used for gas extraction. Jean Billiter in Paris and Karl Kaiser in Munich constructed complex electrolysis cells for drinking water treatment in the 1920s. But only the Munich engineer Alfons Natterer managed to produce, after many diversions, three pharmaceutical specialties containing just electrolyzed water without any additives. He sold it to pharmacies for 50 years. Natterer produced three electrolyte water types. The general idea is best explained with a color chart. Let's say a certain health ailment causes a red discoloration. Since our body is primarily made up of water, it is obvious that more of the blue and green parts of the spectrum are needed now. So, functional water is a kind of correction water. In Japan, Machi Suezuwa produced electrically activated functional water for therapeutic purposes for the first time in the 50s. Most Japanese researchers focused on the alkaline water obtained from electrolysis. The underlying idea was to compensate a great amount of acids which can cause health disorders, especially metabolic diseases. Dr. Hidemitsu Hayashi got leading hospitals to provide tests on the effects of alkaline electrolyte water to treat various illnesses. And his well-documented success led on to the development of an industry that produces so-called water ionizers for using at home in the kitchen. In the meantime, one out of every four Japanese drinks alkaline water from a water ionizer. Appropriate water ionizers, which are today mainly manufactured in Korea, are available around the world and of course also in Germany. They have incorporated water filters and innovative electrolytic cells that produce alkaline and acid electrolyte water at the push of a button. In the former Soviet Republic, an extensive secret research project with electrolyte water was undertaken. The leading man is the Moscow professor and entrepreneur Witold Bakir. He developed above all large-scale solutions. Nowadays, Russia is the global leader in the use of acidic electrolyzed water used for hygienic purposes. During electrolysis, electricity flows through the water and changes the oxidation reduction potential or ORP in water. With alkaline electrolyzed water, the ORP sinks strongly which implies a huge increase in the electron supply. 
with acidic electrolyzed water with an ORP value of plus 600 to 1200 millivolt, a huge energy deficiency occurs. With both water types a chemical reaction happens which wouldn't happen under normal circumstances. This is how a water ionizer produces a mild alkaline cathode water with minus 229 millivolt ORP from a neutral pH tap water with an electron poor ORP. This corresponds to a million times bigger amount of electrons. On the acidic side of the electrolysis cell, a light acidic anode water comes out that shows an extreme deficiency of electrons. On the other hand, most bottled water which we can buy is clearly acidic and deficient in electrons. When you mix 100 types of mineral water from my water bar, you can see the average pH, ORP and TDS, which means the total dissolved solids in parts per million. The question was, where do so many electrons come from in alkaline electrolyzed water and why are they so unstable that the low ORP disappears after a few days? Dr. Hidemitsu Hayashi had suspected that the antioxidant capability of this water derives only from the hydrogen, which is created in the right chamber during electrolysis. Yet it is very volatile. Japanese professor Sanetaka Shirahata in 1997 already could prove that the role of hydrogen is a cell protection factor. He discovered this only for atomic hydrogen, but Professor Shigeo Ota showed in 2007 that also water saturated with gaseous hydrogen had properties which make it a first-class catcher of free radicals. From further research it was discovered that hydrogen is not only the smallest antioxidant but also the finest because it can recharge all the other antioxidants, which are much bigger, like a new alkaline battery in our body, enabling bigger antioxidants to work longer. Drinking electrically activated alkaline cathode water has an obvious energy recharge effect. It is not only good for people, but also for animals. It is used frequently in agriculture. Seeds are sprouting many times quicker. A wilted salad likes to bathe in it as well. The question, what we should refresh ourselves with, seems to be answered. Certainly some pharmaceutical enterprises have taken on the hydrogen issue and sell hydrogen-rich water in small doses at very high prices. Nevertheless, there are enough scientific studies about its usefulness. Clever engineers of the Far East developed quickly very simple electrolysis devices which are sold with hydrogen detection equipment to make believe that not only swak nor swak is contained. Yet hydrogen additives alone will not turn back the hands of time. You do not gain anything by just splitting oxygen and hydrogen from water molecules with an electric current. If you afterwards don't remove the oxygen, in a short time it will be simple water again. Only if acid and alkaline water is separated with a diaphragm membrane into an anode and cathode chamber, 
do we get an active, hydrogen-rich and slightly alkaline drinking water. The slightly acidic, oxidating anode water on the left can be used for cleaning. Some are tormented by the question, can an alkaline and hydrogen-rich water not be made with a chemical toolbox, like the pharmacist Struve used, instead of using an electric current? It would be easier to patent and market compared to the 200-year-old water electrolysis. Yet that doesn't really work. Even though it sounds easy, you take an alkali metal or an alkali earth metal like magnesium, which reacts alkaline with water, creating hydroxide ions and releasing hydrogen. What is the mistake there? With electrolysis, oxidative oxygen and acidic ions, like those from chlorine, sulfur or fluorine, are removed with the acidic water. With the chemical method, they remain inside and interfere with the saturation with hydrogen. The measurements of Dr. Hayashi himself can show this. Even after 12 hours reaction time with three of his magnesium sticks, a full saturation with hydrogen cannot be reached. A good water ionizer, electrical, can achieve in a few seconds. Also, all of the similar mineral mixes on the market do not work differently. Remember, water is nothing else than just rusty hydrogen. There are only three components in which functional water can make any sense. Hydrogen, oxygen and electrons. Therefore, only with an electric current we are able to direct the electrons correctly. There is no other way. I'm sorry, shorter was not possible. Detailed information on everything that you can do with functional electrolyzed water can be found in my books and videos. Thank you for listening.